Ich habe Ryan in der Hand. 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 As long as it doesn't carry a top, I'm fine with it. Uh, Alright, let's start. Uh, objective code, uh, we're recording this. Uh, we are very little number of people this year, but next year we're probably going to get out of here. Thank you uh, at Startplatz, uh, Startplatz for hosting us, it was awesome. So, who wants to start? Who wants to start? Because otherwise I would have to start. Why don't you start? Because you're left control. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not sure about that. So, okay, I'm going to start. Plugged in. Um, Okay, um, it's not funny to start. Let's stop the music first of all. Yeah. Uh, let's get the song. That's going to be the easiest part. Alright, so uh, I haven't done much, but I have done something a little bit and I started on this idea. So uh, let me welcome you to my home, my hometown, Latheim, near 30 kilometers from here, and to introduce my problem because this is, I want you all guys to explain why you did this. this um, this program today and this idea. My problem is actually uh, the following. These are uh, nice uh, 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 ladies from my political party and basically nice ladies, any uh, organization giving, handing flyers to from door to door. And since this is the election now, since I hope every German is gonna uh, go to, the, to cast his ballot on Sunday, um, we have this problem that I, I am, uh, putting flyers in every letterbox in my village and my wife is doing the same thing, she's helping me out and so we have to track um, where we put the flyer in the letterbox so what we do is, until now we do it in a very very analog way we go to Google Maps, we print an A4, I have, it's very convenient, my village is pretty much A4 um, <laughs> landscape we print on an A4 paper and then we go with, with on the, over the street and we go with a pen and we mark the, the street and we say we've done this one. So the way we do it is we put all the flyers in, in, in a bag, like we, I don't know, we take like 200 flyers, even though we have at home like 4,000, 4, but we're not going to take the 4,000. And we go on the street, when we finish the street we cross the street completely, but obviously every time we, 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 we end up being in the middle of the street, and we have no flyers anymore, so we write down, I did it up, to, up until number 49. So the obvious problem is that a lot of time uh, we don't understand each other, or, or people are coming back. Come on, enter. We just started. It's not really important right now because I, I was the only one to present my, my problem. Um, and um, yeah, so the biggest problem we have is that sometimes we misunderstand with my wife, maybe because of the language. And uh, we end up putting two flyer in the same uh, in the same house, which is not so cool uh, for the party in, the, in this case because people think, all oh, right, the greens, and they are throwing even more paper. Anyway, uh, so I, I I recognize we need an app for that. So that's what I've been working on today. It's a very very simple. It's the beginning of it. Um, the way I see it, pr probably everybody's going to have the same uh, um, the same icon today. Uh, it, I, I called it this tracker, but it, I, I, I realized it sounds like distracting. Uh, I don't know what, what to call this app, but it's a, it's a tracker for distributing flyers. This tracker? Yeah, this tracker, flyer tracker, I don't know, flyer distribution, whatever, call it whatnot. Um, and I think I'm going to restart it from Xcode. And so, so the basic gist is um, you will, I, I think I was add one step which is uh, create projects because like for example uh, a Bundestag and then I don't know a Val or and then I don't know a, a birthday party of my daughter or whatever and then you will end up in this screen which right now is the master screen and there is a list of screen the, uh, a street sorry so this is the Yomama street and it says that I, I, I've distributed one to five um, and so when I want to add a street I would click on the, on the plus button and it will use uh, core location to locate where I am and here it will show me a list of streets 
which are around, so using uh, for, first of all co-location and then uh, see a geocoder. Uh, and uh, then I will select which list. Obviously, I, I'm probably never going to uh, make the promotion of the greens around infinite loop. Uh, and then once, you, once you've done that, what you do, you, you would say done, and it will add the street, and, and you will see the first bug. No to no. Uh, <laughs> because I just added that line of code before starting the presentation. Um, and so once you have that, maybe I would go directly to the, to the detail screen. With the detail screen right now, as you can see, I'm an amazing designer. Um, uh, the detail screen will allow you to uh, add another number. Uh, as you go around the street, you would uh, probably say, okay, uh, I'm doing number 12, and then you would uh, add, add it, and then number 12 uh, should be here, but it's not, as you can see. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, because this is the plus and minus button. Uh, so number whatever, number nine would be added, and it's here. And I still don't know what I would do UI-wise. I, I don't really know. That doesn't really scope if you have a street with 400 numbers. Um, um, and, um, and obviously the, the trick is, is if, if, I, if I'm saying, okay, I'm, I'm adding number five, before that I put the damn thing in the letterbox, then it will say, oh, no, don't double distribute these people. And it won't allow me to do that, and I will know that my wife was there. Why do I say that my wife was there? Because this is on my iPhone. Because I have a little bit, uh, a little bit of a to-do list of future plan of thing I want to do. And obviously, I want to sync. Uh, that's the whole point of it. I want this thing to run on. Uh, I want this thing to run on the um, uh, on, on different devices. Syncing. I'm not sure on what I'm syncing. I've been pondering using CouchDB, CouchBase, and syncing over there using uh, uh, iCloud. Uh, using Dropbox, whatever, I don't know. Uh, the other thing I want to do is because uh, having your iPhone while distributing flyers is, is, is a very bad idea. Is I want to, I'd like to do a pedal app, but first of all I need to get a pedal. Uh, <laughs> Good but, excuse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I think uh, the pedal is, or, or anything from Apple that would come one day is actually a good thing because you, have, you take the flyer in this hand and then you take like plus 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 done, plus 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 done. Um, I want to use MK overlay to mark the street, so basically I want to do exactly what we do today with the pen, but on the iPhone uh, and, and on the iPad. And what I'm saying on the iPad, I want to do a, a, a new universal app because the iPad app has way more um, real estate to put all the map and everything. And maybe I want to do an, a web interface, I'm not sure about that, but that would, be, if, that would possibly be nice that uh, um, I, I check out very fast on the internet what my wife has done, or I have done, and that would be also nice, speaking of MK overlay, to have different colors to know who was where, but it's not very important. Um, so, uh, I uh, wanted to mention two very s uh, small things that, that I encountered while, while doing this. Uh, one is actually, the second one is uh, the allocation manager. I, 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 I stumbled upon uh, the same problem again, which was, you, you go and declare it, maybe I can show in the code actually, I'm going to change in presentation mode. Uh, so what you do is, if I am in this, no it's map. If I am um, over here and I'm doing uh, a typical location manager allocating it, but the one catch to know is that, uh, and, and most of us here will know that, but uh, Thank you, auto completion. If you do that this way with with a local variable local to the to the view did load scope, and then you do delegate self and you say start updating location, uh, the the delegate is never going to be called. And my guess, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's just a memory problem. It's just arc uh, is releasing uh, the variable or the pointer because it's out of scope. So the simple thing to do. Is, is to put it as, a, as an IVAR. Uh, I know this because I've, been, I've seen this problem on and on and on. I, uh, um, for me, it's a problem because it's a problem for new people being in the, in the language because it, there's really no way to know it except knowing it and knowing the, the basic arc and memory management concepts. Um, but there is no real kind of, I don't know, warning or crash or whatever. It's just uh, the, the, the delegate is never called. Um, there, there is? Yeah. You just have to enable NS zombie. Oh yeah, Maybe. I'm not sure it would. I mean, we can, we can try very quickly because yeah. it's it's not really hard. 
In um, this case, it will definitely. Um, why? I'm not sure if it if it's gonna work. Yeah, but, but how do you access it if it goes away? I just I just had yeah I just had. That. Ah, in this in this case it won't help. I don't know. Yeah. So let's not stop. Oh, by the way, don't forget to stop your uh, updating your location. Otherwise, you will kill the battery of your your user. And so let's do this. If if I click click on plus. I don't get the list here, and so let's see if you are right. Maybe you are. No, not that. Not that. No, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Keep calm. Stay calm. Uh, that's in diagnostic zombie object. And I don't think it's going to solve the problem. Maybe. Not solve the problem, but point you towards the problem, probably. No. No, it's just that the delegate is never going to be caught because the, the object has been uh, nailed. The allocated. Uh, the allocated and nailed, I guess. Um, um, ah, see. Well, that's another problem, I guess, uh, because I just changed something. Anyway, we can speak about that again because it's it's an interesting case. The other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, the thing that I, I, I obviously I, I well obviously it's not obvious, but I use storyboarding uh, because I like yeah. it. Yeah. And so um, this is the very uh, simple storyboard in this case. Um, and I, I like a lot of things in storyboarding. Uh, people get crazy when they see all those uh, 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 lines going in every direction. But the, the thing which uh, drives me a little bit nuts is um, is that there is storyboard, a storyboard for uh, for pushing, uh, but there is no real storyboard for uh, for for dismissing. Uh, so when I here I'm pushing here when you click on pu on push on, on when you click on push yeah, when you click on push on plus on the plus here. I'm pushing this view controller, and then when you click on done, I want to dismiss it. Obviously, you can write one line of kind code. It's not hard, but why do I have uh, a storyboard? So what I did is I did uh, uh, a custom storyboard uh, called, which I call um, MC Dismiss Segway. Uh, it's just um, from your storyboard Segway, and in the, it's it's very stupid, but in, in the perform method, what I do is I do. Uh, dismiss view controller animated and it's just it allows me to everywhere in my storyboard call this guy and for those of you who don't know but I'm, I guess most of you know that but the, good, the, the cool thing about this is when you declare something like that in your project uh, storyboard is, is smart enough to know that there is one more story, um, uh, storyboard uh, segue sorry and this guy is called dismiss it's just called dismiss because um, because I called it dismiss segue, so it kind of um, I I, my, I have the impression uh, it, it kind of removed the, the the prefix and and removed segue at the end and and name name it under this. Uh, I think if you actually and then I'm I'm finished for that. If you actually call it uh, like uh, something else, it's probably going to change the name. Yeah, it's called dismiss buddy. Yeah. But uh, that's what they do. Uh, maybe there is a property to name your your controller, uh, your your segue. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I would love to have your feedback, uh, your questions or whatever, because it's uh, I don't know if if there if there is some kind of market for that or, or whatever. I don't care. I need it um, because when we go in the streets, we need this thing one day or another. So uh, um, yeah. Has been fun to to do. Anything? Next one. By the way, uh, Mike, uh, you you entered the room when I was explaining this. Uh, what was it? Yeah, this thing with the location manager. Maybe you have an idea. The fact that it's um, it's obvious for someone who has been there a little bit, but it might totally not be obvious for uh, for a, a newbie. That when you uh, where is that? When you declare a location manager um, from co location and, and you, you, you set the delegate, if you declare it this way, the delegate is never going to be called. My guess is that because Arc released and nailed the pointer. Well, because you're putting it in an automatic variable which will cease to exist at the end of story. Yeah, I know. So I know this, but my point is, and that's why I have it here, um, there is, it's, it's, it's hard to tell if you don't know it. I know it because I know it. I've been there, been through there. But that's not an arc issue. That's in every time you create a variable in a method issue. Yeah. 
Yeah, but how would you as a newbie know that? I mean, you have to know your basic concepts. I mean, as a newbie, I guess I wouldn't until I learned about scope, and then I would. It's not an art issue, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's not new. It's always been that way. That has nothing to do with location manager and everything to do with just the scope of automated queries. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But, yeah, it's hard. Would be nice if there was... There is no like com uh, analyzer no, warning or whatever. Arc, it would, well, it would be leaked because you're, you're leaking it. Yes, that's true. That's, that's just bad memory management. I mean, bad memory management is not the same thing as something that's different or changed. Yeah, but the problem here is actually, and that's actually a little bit of a problem, ARC makes things easy, but it allows you to make error which are then sometimes less obvious. No, in this instance, you were making an error and then ARC made you realize your error. You cannot allocate it something and just leak it. That's, that's wrong. And if it worked by coincidence, that was not supposed to be working. It has nothing to do with ARC. Yeah. Except for the fact that it will crash if you don't use ARC. So you will know you have a problem. That's my point here. Oh, it would just leak. Okay, I thought I, thought I heard it would crash. So it would just leak, so you, yeah, but you would see it at, some, at one point. But if, 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 we're, if we're picking NITs, then I mean, you shouldn't pass an empty block, you should pass nil, and you don't need to import a UI kit because it's imported in your book compiled header. <laughs> what? Go to, your, go to your header? Well, that's the, the, that's the standard header. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware that that's the standard header. Okay. Like, there's all kinds of standard shit. I mean, the, the templates are written by interns. Like, why would you trust that? You see that? You import UI kit, UI kit, unnecessary. Delete it. Okay. Okay. Everything. All of it. Yeah. I don't it's in your pre-compiled header. It doesn't need to be there. Same thing for foundation. Yeah. And you know what else I delete? All those lines of ego shit on the top? You don't need that either. I wouldn't. I like it. I like ego shit. I hope you're fine with it. Oh, I don't care. It's your code. <laughs> but you asked my opinion. Yeah. It, it's always dangerous. Actually, it's not even an opinion. Those are just facts. Okay, next one. <laughs> Who's the next one? Eric or... Uh, you have to leave. Maybe. Okay. No, you, you cannot leave without showing anything. Um, as long as you're in there, you see how oh, you have all of those Objective C things outside of the if def Objective C. Yeah. Then you should be inside the if def Objective C together with those other things because if you try to compile this in something other than Objective C, it'll crash. But why would I? I don't know, but let me put it this way. Like I did this once where I forgot, and then later on I had like subtle crashing or linking errors and I couldn't figure it out. So if you're going to leave the if def objective C, then you should put all of your objective C things in there. And if you want to be a jackass, then you should just delete it all together. Oh that's interesting by the way though. The, the, the image is stay. I mean you use precompiled headers, yeah. There you go. I like precompiled headers. <laughs> Mom, I like precompiled headers. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, that's what I mean from you. You come here, you work the whole day, and then you leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I have a lot of different stuff. Uh, some for the work and activities. This guy is faking it. Yeah, I won't make a presentation. Ah, that's, that's too fake. bad. Yeah, I would be too ashamed. But promise, promise you will come back to Objective Cologne in 2014. Yes, of course. Yeah. And that you'll tell 500 of your friends on the internet. <laughs> At least. What, what's going to be here? Uh, you have to plug it. Bye bye. Have a good, have a safe trip. I do not understand this argument. Um, it yeah, the, no press the sense to me. Shut whatever, up. Uh, okay. Computer one, computer. Look, look. Listen, seriously. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Fuck ones and zeros. Utter bullshit. Okay. Look, look. Okay. Look, look. I do not under. I do not under. I do. I do. I do understand this argument. Understand this argument. Understand this. Everything comes. <laughs> so, um, so I didn't build this today because, because you saw it yesterday. Um, what I did do today is refactor a lot of this, but you can't actually see that, so that's a little beyond the point. Uh, instead, I started working on something else. Uh, so if you uh, if you run through this thing and say yes, background, no, no sharing, then it gives you a little code sample, and it does this for all things, and it has the right options in there. Um, but so I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be sure, I want to have a consistent way of testing that like every code sample is in here actually works the way I thought it would work and that it's all correct. Uh, and I figured it might be useful for people to have more extensive than just a few lines to see like an actual complete sample of this is how you put data in it from let's say a text field, this is how you take it out again, this is how it works and doesn't work. So uh, I built a, a data protection demo app uh, currently does uh, keychain and uh, NS data. 
um, and it's really simple. It's not meant for publication on the App Store or something. Um, so, uh, let's see. so yeah, basically you can uh, you can dump stuff in the keychain. Um, And then it locks. Ooh. Anyway, so you can also in a keychain. You can read it out again. And more interesting is if you use it on the de on a device because no. uh, because the keychain is uh, the simulator is limit limited in all these data protection things. So. I'm sure this worked before. Anyways, so uh, so no demo it seems. I can try to uh, open this code. No demo. Anyways, the point is that uh, so all the code is in here to do all these things. But uh, also something I particularly looked at is uh, trying to retrieve data after the device is locked so that you can actually see when that does and doesn't work. So if you store something, it'll store it with all these different protection levels. Uh, if you retrieve it delayed, it'll wait 12 seconds, you lock the phone in between, and you can actually see how does all this data behave and all these protection levels while the device is locked. Um, still, still no demo. Anyway, so uh, so it's all on GitHub, and there are some basic examples. It uh, needs some cleanup of the code and some removing of stuff that is already in the prefix headers. It's uh, but it's meant to be really basic but complete, and uh, and that's all. And, and if you if you have ideas for improvements, you can send a pull request. I don't remember sure. you guys uploading for me, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks. Mr. Oh, oh, that's a nice save, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he was holding it like... Yeah, like, like he's yeah, always holding yeah, it. Was, uh, one the so that's the problem with Yuli, he's always holding it like... Whatever that means... Come on, we'll make it happen. Ooh, that's a small screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I guess it makes my small pictures larger. That's good. Um, so, uh, I have a little software You made opacity in one day. No, no, no. That's just like, um, so, so there is this cool thing um, that you can do in, in like very, 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 very simple electrical engineering, which is, first, uh, this is the most complicated part. Um, you have to imagine that down here there was a big battery and uh, this battery kind of like one end is connected to this wire and one is to this wire and you have to imagine that this is a light bulb okay so um, <laughs> and there's this thing where for example if you have a room that has or a long corridor that has a door at one end and a door at another end and a light at the top so you can see where you're going then um, you want to go and uh, be able to have a light switch on each end of the corridor so that if you go in, you can turn it on, and once you're through, you can turn it off again, because otherwise the electrical company will just have all your riches. Um, and you know that gold is best. Um, so you know yeah. what um, so uh, one thing you can do is, um, you make a configuration like this. So this is the light at the ceiling. This is one switch, so, so this thing here can be toggled between here and here. And uh, here is another switch, and that can be toggled between here and here. So it's not a regular light switch where it just is like on or off, but actually it's a switch that can be like this thing is on or this thing is on. And so what you can do now is, if you turn the switch on, the power will go something like this. So come out of the battery, go through here,
This is connected here because it's switched in that position. So it'll go through here and go through here and it'll be on. But now, if you toggle the switch, and now I'll have to be very, very lucky. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's say you toggle this switch. Um, I'll probably oh. take away the green Short electric. Uh, the, this one. So I toggled the switch. And now what you see is that the power would come in here, would go through here, would go through this wire. And these are not connected here, by the way. They're just overlapping. Um, goes through here and doesn't reach the light bulb anymore. So the light is off. So this is essentially what it was like. Like you came in, toggled the one switch, then it was on. Then you walk through the corridor, toggle this switch again, and turn it off again. And you can do that on both sides. And I always really, really liked this configuration because it's really simple. It just requires two switches and a light bulb, and it's really cheap stuff to get. And you feel like a fucking genius when you figure out how to do this. And you feel like even more of a fucking genius if you find out how to do this for three switches. Um, because it doesn't quite work like this at all. So what I thought, like, it would be nice if uh, I gave, like, little kids or whatever an opportunity to play with something like this. And so I thought, well, the first starting point would be to just do a program where you can <coughs> build a circuit like this and um, have, it, um, have it actually show you what's happening as you toggle the switches. Now, the big problem here is, of course, that uh, there's not enough time, but I managed to cobble together a program that sort of uh, works. So let's see if we can start that. Yeah, I was just wondering because I thought I still had it running. So this doesn't look very revolutionary right now, but what you can do is you can just click somewhere here and uh, have parts. I haven't had time to do the names and I won't be able to do this whole thing, so I, I, I didn't really get the the crossing part yet, so I, I can only do a very simple kind of search. So first we need a battery, of course, and uh, um, then we have a cross connection. That's essentially just, I only need this corner here, but um, I only have the crossing, but it works for all of them. Um, so let's just build a little circuit. And uh, connect horizontally, we need a light bulb we need another corner we need a wire here and of course we would like to have a switch so we have a switch here oh the light went on and now what i can do i can toggle this switch and then oh i fixed it right I can toggle the switch and the light goes on. And off. Well, yeah, and that's as far as I got, but I think it's a promising start. Maybe one day kids will be able to do the three switches and will blow us all away. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. The, the three switch setup you show is illegal in the Netherlands. <laughs> the two switch in the actual? Yeah, yeah. It's illegal? Because, Why is it illegal? because when the light, when the button is off on the light, there must be no power on the light. So you know, it must be safe to the touch. And it is safe switch, to touch. Just don't no, because the, depending on the position, there might still be power on the light while it is off. Because the power is the same on. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, that's true, different. but, uh, but uh, in countries where. Where the, where the voltage is, is 100 and, 100 and 10, then the, then, then the non-switch part of the bulb should be, should be connected to the, the ground, so it should be illegal there. Ah, yeah, yeah maybe. That's not a problem with that, it's just so cool. Yeah, but the battery is still sick. No questions, have you solved the problem with now the switch says on when it's on? That's what always makes me crazy. Getting the switches in the right positions. Yeah, why switches? That's no worries. Yeah, that's why we don't have switches labeled like that. That's why I said push switches. Yeah, push. Yeah, they're very reliable though. Okay.
Ready? So, um... I can't believe you use Firefox. Sorry. For... <laughs> Dude, this is 2013. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Still Firefox. Still exists. Go ahead. So, um... Yeah. When people want to take notes, well, yeah, before we used paper and pen. And today, well, we still use, uh, if people want to take notes on an iPad, for example, they use a note app. And most note apps just, yeah, simulate paper and pen. Sometimes you can type, sometimes you can just, yeah, kind of draw things. Uh, but still, it's not very optimized to kind of share things. So if there's maybe there are people working on the same, taking notes, for example, about the same thing, you might want to share some part of your notes with some people, and you might want to do that in real time. So I know there are some solutions for computers. Um, I haven't seen any for iOS. Maybe I didn't look well enough. But this is just an idea of how it could work. So uh, there are some yeah, basic, uh, well, message, messaging app like yeah, Facebook Messenger, but you can't really see it well here, okay. Um, anyhow, so the idea is to have kind of a chat and to be able to take some notes using a chat. Uh, right now it's still pretty basic, so in the day I didn't have time for so much. So this is what you have, well you basically have a list of notes, which is pretty standard for any type of note taking. And then you would, yeah, enter some text and then just share it. Then you could be able to, yeah, select some chat room by clicking over there and then choosing with whom you want to communicate and then exchange text and images with them. It's not there yet. So, but you get a general ID and, uh, yeah, it's the beginning. So, yeah, suggest so don't hesitate. That's it. <laughs> you can show a simple technique if anyone is interested for for uh, um, sort of UI prototype. It's very basic. We can show it after because you can show us also the the hackathon you've been working for the last thirty days. And it's not thirty days; two years. Honestly, it's a very long hackathon. And, and by the way, um, Eric uh, has worked on this uh, project previously as well, so this is totally normal. Let's go ahead. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the other day, a um, friend of mine and me were trying to find an app, the uh, Go app, um, on the iPod and on the iPhone as well, and uh, none of what we found I really liked. So basically I wanted to implement a really simple, basic app that just works, because um, it's not fun if you play in the middle of the game, the app crashes, or you try to um, go back one step and you can't uh, go back forth again or um, you switch, you try to, to read something in the menu and it, it doesn't go back to your game or something like that. So um, just the Go game, as simple as it is, and um, maybe later on um, extend it to um, be able to, to save uh, the game and then you can uh, begin different games uh, a little bit similar to letterpress so that when you're waiting at a bus stop so that you can um, pull out your phone and just continue the game like a chess game or whatever and um, yeah so I've, I've got the 19 times 19 version here um, there's some the, the standard one is larger but uh, I want to do the basic first and then extend it. And um, yeah, so you just basically you set your points. And then um, in um, the next step in the implementation is actually interesting because now um, you have to check if there's any circuits, so to say. So if 
the circle closes. So the, uh, I don't know, maybe I explain it again, uh, because not everyone of you might know Go. So the idea is to uh, gain as much um, of room as possible. Not necessarily all the, um, all the points have to be um, full of stones. Usually they are not, but uh, you have to gain territory. And um, the game in the game ends where when nobody can do anything anymore, and uh, then the territory uh, is counted. And um, so now you have to implementing this game. You have to think, what well, what do I have to do in order to detect, let's say, um, um, very simple circle? I just so now, in this case, um, so now in this case, um, didn't get us far, but um, what it should do is now, uh, and if this this stone is captured, so you should remove it. And um, what you basically have to do to um, detect this um, was. So I, I, I thought it's just, okay, you have one white stone, of course you have to uh, check what's the next, uh, what's, what are the surrounding stones, so, and then since, um, um, since there, there is the possibility that you have, um, let's, let's say, um, a white stone here and here as well, and then the, the in order to detect if it's just a circle, the one condition is that um, the distance between the neighboring um, stones of the same color is uh, larger than the stage size. So, yeah, so, which is one point to another. And um, another interesting thing is once you detect it, um, such a circle, so you know you have a closed loop. Then you have to check um, what's what's in the loop. So if if um, the loop is full of stones, of whatever color, um, or or if there is holes, because uh, if, if it's full of stones, then you have to uh, remove the, the stones of the opponent, and you can do this with uh, such a the flow um, technique or something, so you basically, um, yeah, no, flooding, flooding pin or something, it's called, I don't remember. Anyway, the point is that you, um, you check from one um, point, let's, let's say these, these are, here's the circle, this is all white, and then you, you Check on one spot. Is there um, another uh, one of the same color until you reach the circle, and then um, to the other side? So you have basically the first and the last, uh, or the most western and most eastern uh, um, stone. And then for each of these stones, you check if there's uh, the same color uh, south, south or north again, and um, then you add that to the queue and check again if, um, if there are stones of the same color in the horizontal line. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, the principal ideas how this works are clear by now, I just didn't get to implement them. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I think you'll find that uh, um, finding the, the adjoining border is, is, uh, is uh, an application of a path finding algorithm. I'm not totally sure, but uh, that's my association. There, okay. There's a lot of path there's a lot of research in path finding games, and this is an application of a simplified path finding with a, with a grid. You have like only uh, eight directions from one point, which you have in your case. You know? Okay. There's applications for like. Uh, hexagonal patterns and so on and so on. But this has been well studied as far as I know. Thank you. I will look it up.
Next. Uh-oh. Let's Oh my god. I think you're, you're covering the camera off the other machine. No, it's, uh, it's okay. No, it's, uh, it's, there. it's It's more about the, the sound, actually. Uh, and anything else? Okay, so that's it. Yeah. It's more about the sound. Okay, it's more more uh, about uh, two. Um, everybody knows core data, I hope. Uh, core data has an XML structure, but uh, that's not what you get from big companies like Lufthansa or Telekom. You get things like uh, XSD files, which look essentially like that. Not not very nice to read them. Uh, actually, built for machines and for processing. Uh, XSD uh, is uh, XML schema uh, scheme schema definition and it um, uh, essentially describes uh, records, uh, database stuff, how records are organized, uh, related to each other and things like that. Uh, so you see that is about what I got from the company. This one. Yeah. Sorry. That's it. Okay, I tried to find my project. So here's in my project files. I didn't know that it was that that big. The screen. Okay. Um, so I I added. Uh, okay. I made a little project from scratch. I didn't care about uh, what it produces because I only wanted to invoke uh, a script, uh, just processing it and making it a little more comfortable for me. So I uh, used this one. I made myself a little. Where is it? Hopefully everybody knows. You, you can do some things that look like little compiler, compiler ones, actually scripts. Just a moment, like that. Okay, my, I, I made myself a script which is able to process an XSD file as an XML file. So it only treats it as an XML file and try to get as much core data information out of the script, uh, out of the XSD file as possible. So, um, what I wanted to achieve, I hope this is now demoing good. Uh, let's just build it. Comes a bit magic. That's how we are, right? There it is. So, you see, there is a core data um, browser opening, and it was now created from the XSD file. So, uh, the input is uh, virtually from every co company you like uh, processing. XML, they should have XSD files to interact with other companies. And on my, my uh, on my side, I get my core data, I get relationships like that, I get uh, types, and uh, probably I can do, there's one case, I'm not sure if I will find it, uh, I have made some regular expressions just to do um, uh, um, uh, value checking, for example, I can, can do this too. This is obviously not the complete XSD uh, definition, which can do unions and structs and things like that, and data is definition virtually. Uh, but it's not about the database, it's just describing sorts of data, relations of data, and how it is structured. And now uh, here it is processed into a core data file, because core data um, modeler file are actually an XML file themselves. Uh, the, the nice part is, uh, even if it's not perfect, uh, core data uh, will throw uh, real errors, so you can do it manually, they just last 5 or 10 percent. I really wondered about uh, that nobody really cared about this scene, because I thought bigger companies uh, are adopting iPad more and more. Uh, I do this for avion uh, avi aviation stuff, so the, the big record is just representing um, some sort of uh, record for uh, representing a flight with everything on it, uh, with weather data on it, with um, people who are on the flight, with, with uh, some checking stuff, with fuel stuff, with uh, weather stuff, everything you can imagine. It's in this big data record and it's just shifted from people to people. 
and they uh, just get the data out of it or just put their data on, on it. So uh, my application, which is not this tool, uh, is just about uh, getting those records and uh, letting pilots fill out some parts of it and handing it over to the uh, ground personnel to just archive it or just uh, statistically work on that. So uh, I thought about it would, it would be a good idea to have the data coming from other companies to me uh, or the data structures essentially coming from other uh, companies to me uh, to, to just convert into core data because it was so obvious uh, we have an XML file for the definition, we have core data modular files which is an XML definition in an Apple style. So there should be a tool that can, uh, can do this. The tool I used is, uh, I'm not sure if I will stay using it, the tool I'm using is actually XML2. Uh, uh, or again, uh, it's called X SLT, it's called uh, XML Translation. This is a language which uh, talks, uh, which is, is uh, made in XML. You shouldn't write your program language in XML. It's a real hassle if it comes to greater and lower than and things like that and whatever. Uh, it's not really readable, as you can see. It's not fun to, uh, to program it because it has no loops. Just imagine a program language without loops. Uh, so you, you can use stacks and things like that for it. And it's very hard to learn and it gets complex very easily. So maybe I will do it with a document object model, just pass uh, what I get in the XSD file and spit it out as a core data file on the other as the, the side. Maybe this is the future of it. Uh, maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I just uh, tinker with this uh, XSLT stuff. Depends on uh, how many records I will get uh, in the future. That's it. So um, if anybody has the same pains about XML, things like that, come to me. I need help. I will give help. You're welcome. Anyone yeah, aber mach mal, aber, aber ich muss auf dein Reihen kopieren. Ähm, nee, dafür haben wir wirklich keine Zeit. Also du kannst, du kannst dich anschließen, oder? Du kannst über Funk jetzt kopieren. Warum kopieren? Schließ deinen Rechner an. Ja, stimmt. Weil wir nur noch drei Minuten haben. Das kann jetzt kein Fake. Ach so, nee, das reicht zu vorne. Ja, okay, dann nicht halt. Okay, ähm. Ja, da wurde wir jetzt lernen. Äh, Thanks everybody for being there, and uh, yeah, now we have to uh, uh, clean a little bit of the place, like put all the pizza things in this bag there, and put all your glasses over there, and uh, that's it. And we have to leave in the next minutes. I'm tired. Bye. <laughs>